folks, Craig here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Classic Controller Pro from Nintendo for the Wii, which is of course the follow-up to the original Classic Controller, which has been available since launch for the Wii. Now for those of you who haven't seen an original Classic Controller, uh, this is what it looks like. It looks and feels a bit like a Super Nintendo controller, you know, it's round, it doesn't have handles like a lot of modern controllers do, and um, the D-pad and the face buttons feel great. A nice, generous-sized D-pad. These analog sticks down here, a lot like Sony's DualShock controller. I don't care for much for this placement. I prefer them to be offset, like the Xbox or the GameCube controllers. Uh, like the GameCube controller, the L and R buttons have an analog give to them, and then a digital click. You push them all the way down. They left a lot of people to think that uh, perhaps at some point Nintendo would patch the ability to use the classic controller as a GameCube controller, but... Uh, well, this is Nintendo we're talking about, and they like to dash everyone's hopes and dreams and then feed off their tears, so that never happened. Now here we have the Classic Controller Pro, which was recently released. As you can see, the face of the controller is largely the same as the original Classic Controller here. Same face buttons, still feel great, nice nice give to them. Uh, the analog sticks that are still down here, still don't care for that, but uh, if you see, I can fit my two fingers in here. And uh, I can't do that over here. They've been they've been spaced further apart, further to uh, you know closer to the edges of the controller, which is really cool. And of course now you have these handles here, which are a lot like GameCube handles. They have the little round here, rounded edge here to meet your hand, which is nice. Of course, it's collecting a slew of fingerprints already and dust and lint and cat hair. Love the gloss. Thanks, Nintendo. Awesome idea. As you can see, the shoulder buttons have been completely redesigned. We have L and R right here, but there are no longer analog. I suppose no one ever used the analog on the L and R. And then we have ZL and ZR here, which is really awkwardly named. And these are also not, uh, these are not analog either. These are purely digital. The back of the original Classic Controller had this weird clip here. Nintendo never utilized this. I believe a third party utilized this and came out with some contraption that would allow you to clip your Wii Remote to this. I have no idea why you'd want to do that. It makes the controller heavy as hell. Uh, the clip, there is no clip here. I, I suppose Nintendo realized that they never used it and they took it out. Uh, another difference on the back here is the, the back of the Classic Controller Pro has a textured finish, which is nice. You know, It doesn't slip out of your hands. The back of the original Classic Controller, um, while not glossy like the front, uh, it is very smooth, like a, like a polished stone. Uh, so this textured finish is very preferable. Another difference we have here is the controller cable comes from the top as opposed to the bottom from the original. And I'm sure that's preferable for most people. And uh, because the Classic Controller or the Classic Controller Pro themselves don't have any wireless protocols, you of course still have to clip this to a Wii Remote. And this, this is what you use for the wireless. Uh, this leads many people to, to, to you know, think of the classic controllers not as a true wireless controller. And I guess technically that's true. But you're not tethered to the machine, and I suppose, for me at least, that's the point. You can just throw this off to the side or in your lap or whatever. Uh, because I don't have any black Wii remotes, it looks like a black and white cookie. Or maybe a Michael Jackson ensemble. The classic controller pro is... Almost the same exact thing as a Sony DualShock controller. I hear, uh, well, this isn't a DualShock 3, this is a 6 axis, there's no rumble in this, but you get the idea. Um, the analog sticks do not press like these analog sticks do, but other than that, it's, it's very, very, very similar. There is a difference though in how it feels. I feel like when I'm holding a PlayStation 3 controller, I feel like, I don't know if it's the angle of the handle in relation to how high up the analog sticks are, but I feel like I'm trying to sit on a bar stool. That's just a little too high. Whereas with the Classic Controller Pro, I don't have that feeling. I still don't like the analog sticks down here, but I suppose as a Classic Controller, the idea is to keep the D-pad uh, the primary focus, so I guess I can understand that, at least on the Classic Controller, not so much on Sony's controllers. Um, so while I still think this is a bit awkward, I, I, I think that overall this is probably a bit more comfortable than Sony's controller. That may just be personal preference and uh, your mileage may vary. The Classic Controller Pro is available now and it retails for the same price that the original model did. It goes for $20, which I think is very, very reasonable. Um, is it worth picking up? I think so, especially if you don't have a Classic Controller. It's worth it for those great virtual console games and even those retail games that support the Classic Controller. 
Um, is it worth upgrading if you already own a classic controller? Again, I still think so because I think this is much more comfortable, a much better controller overall. And again, it's not terribly expensive, but of course, not everyone has $20 to throw around. Personally, I recommend picking up the bundle with Monster Hunter Tri. Uh, this costs $60, so it's $10 less than if you bought the controller and the game separately. And of course, this is a fantastic game, so I would recommend picking this up. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you next time. You guys take it easy.